Hello and welcome back to the Des Bishop Podcast. It's uh, hello to our podcast listeners and our YouTube viewers. Now that we're very much the audio-visual experience, one of the uh, one of the negative things about doing this, doing the videos as well as the pod, you know, as well as the audio is I notice how much I touch my face and, and and like I'm 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 very aware that I'm not supposed to be touching my face. I tell myself not to touch my face all the time, but then I watch back these videos and I'm I'm always touching my face. I don't mean it. Like my nose is itchy right now. Uh but uh, I got to scratch it. I'm sorry. I just anyway, I I've been isolating, so I guess it's that I guess it's a little bit safer, you know? Um Anyway, it's great to be back. Thanks, thanks everybody for all the feedback. It's been fantastic. Um, I, I really, I don't want this to just become a Trump moan podcast, but that's why I try to change it up as much as possible. Uh, but when it's me on my own, I'm probably going to talk about Trump. A lot has happened in the last couple of days, um, so I do want to get into that. Plus, I was talking to uh, somebody I know uh, just via text who is a nurse in Manhattan, um, a, a, actually a children's ICU nurse, but obviously uh, all the kids have been moved out of the ICU. So now she's looking after COVID patients. So I want to talk a bit about that in a sec. But before we get into anything too serious, can I just talk about my dog, Becky? Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I've done a lot of posting about Becky. And honestly, I'm not, I'm one of these people who would be possibly possibly a little bit critical of people who share too much of their dogs or their pets and I don't hate cats but I'm not really like a cat guy and there's like a lot of cat postings and it's not like my thing uh but the thing about uh Becky is that I just wanted to show people who she was and then do a couple of funny videos and now I just get messages all the time more Becky please more Becky and I don't know if that's from a minority of people who love dogs and some of my Instagram followers are like enough with the fucking dog or is this actually good content? I mean, listen, I'm happy something to talk about, you know, uh, but I wouldn't mind a few comments on whether you're happy or, or sad with all the dog content. Um, I'm sitting outside on my back deck. I've, I've used a, a sun lounger as a temporary gate on my front which would be the only exit point. But the dog is sitting on my right. I'm not going to... In fact, I'll do it. I just don't want to disturb her. Just for the... Oh, there we go. There's the dog for those that are watching. Um, I had a great frame, of course. Now I've fucked it all up. I've screwed it all up. But anyway, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um... The, the you know the dog the dog has been has been great I have to say the dog has been great and uh, I I really it it it's it's made the quarantine so much easier um, it's a funny thing dogs I mean I had dogs growing up and I actually fostered a dog in Beijing Ji Li uh, Jin Mao Gao Golden Retriever and uh, Man, she was a she was a barrel of energy. She was like not even one when I got her. My ex-girlfriend couldn't keep her. She moved apartments and they couldn't they couldn't keep the dog. That was my previous breeding or sorry, breeding. I've never bred a dog. That was my previous fostering. Uh but now I'm fostering. I mean, she's a pit bull really. She's a mix, but she's a pit bull. And uh that carries its own responsibilities and a lot of people have their opinions on that. And I'm actually, I, you know, I'm not one of these people that's like, Oh, pit bulls, they just misunderstood. Like, I think there's a danger with pit bulls. Uh, that's why you just have to be a super responsible owner, which of course I will be a super responsible foster parent. And, uh, it'll be a long time before she comes off that leash. I can tell you that she had a couple of interactions with other dogs yesterday. It was like, all right, it was like average. If they were off the leash, would they have settled down? I really don't know. It's not my area of expertise. Anyway, I know I, I, I'm I doing, I, I, I literally am doing what I didn't want to do. You know, I can't stand people going on about their dogs so much. Um, 
So that's my uh, that's my that's my new company, Becky. She she's very very needy, you know. If this was a, a relationship between a man and a woman, I'd already be very uncomfortable because I've never been great with the very affectionate ladies. And Becky is is very affectionate. I mean, it's pretty full on, you know. And uh, there's two things. If Becky was a was a real woman, there's two things that would have made me run already. One, just too much affection. I'm just not comfortable with it from a human. And two, the worst fucking farts you can possibly imagine. If either of those things had come from my girlfriend, then we it'd be over already, you know. And I wouldn't mind that because if a girl, you know, in my previous relationships, if a woman has like ripped, like ripped a good one in front of me, like when we've gotten comfortable with each other, I'll like, I'll high five her back when you could high five. Do you remember high fives? But, uh, you know, rips a loud one, like bang. Yeah. You know, but if she does a silent but violent early on in the relationship, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And to be, actually, truth be told, I wouldn't even care. Especially if she told me. She was like, oh, my God, that was a hot one. If she was like, oh, my God, that was a hot one, I'd be like, oh, yeah, here we go. <gasps> oh, my God. You know, then you smell it. Anyway, so I'm uh, fostering a dog. Actually, I felt a bit better about the fostering today because somebody had mentioned to me that a couple of years ago there was a negative article about the shelter that I had uh, got the dog from. So I Googled the, the shelter to find the article. I couldn't find the article. However, I did find a news report from ABC News, proper New York ABC News, uh, saying Brookhaven Animal Shelters are looking for fosters because they're looking to lessen the amount of staff that they have during the COVID outbreak. So they want people to take the dog so they can have less people in the shelter. And I I mean, it just made me feel better about the fostering because sometimes I feel like fostering is a bit of a cop-out. But actually, they were on the hunt for it. And I didn't even know that. So that made me feel a bit better and uh, so not only am I keeping her safe giving her a life temporarily but I'm also stopping them from risking higher risk of uh, you know working with a lot of people so not well done me but certainly I feel a bit better because I was feeling bad about this you know maybe having to uh, you know give her back at some stage you know I mean obviously people talk about failed fosters and I would be lying if I didn't say I googled how to bring a dog back to Ireland, but the problem is that I only live in Ireland half the year, so it would require a, a bit of a deal with my brother Aiden, which I haven't discussed with him yet. So anyway, I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through some messages that I got from um I'm not gonna say who because I mean I didn't want to I, I I wanted to see if she would do the pod, but she's in the middle of this hell. You know, she's just been over like, you know, three full shifts. Um, but let me just tell you the, 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 the sacrifices that somebody I know, uh, an, an, an ICU nurse, uh, is, is doing um, to get us through this crisis here in New York, which is uh, the hottest of hot spots, as Trump said. So, um, oh God, I keep trying to find the spot. Uh, I messaged her and I said, you had it. So most importantly, um, she, she, she just, she's recovered from COVID-19, which she got from being a nurse. So now she has superpowers because she's, uh, recovered from COVID, um, but she said that being back at work was much worse than being sick because it's a war zone. That's what she said. Told me where she worked and uh, told me that they'd moved all the kids out of the ICU because she's a pediatric ICU nurse. But the kids have been moved out and uh, only um, only COVID patients. So, she's, uh, so I asked if she was over capacity and she said not yet, but they opened the ORs and stuff and they opened the hospital for special surgery today and our ambulatory surgery center across the street. No idea who's running them, but none of them take ICU patients. It's a pretty scary scene. I mentioned that she's probably going to have P PTSD from all this and she said she's cried every day for probably three weeks. Um, I asked her if she's seen a lot of people die and she said they've had three and uh, they've been open for four days. Uh, but it's not just the dying. It's the fact that these people don't have family. We barely get a story about them. 
until we start speaking to the family. It's just sad that they're alone and we're all running around like lunatics around them. It's a sad time to die. Um, she hopes that we're all better people after this, is what she said. I had just said it's sad that people die alone. Um, I said, you're doing incredible work. You'll go down in history. She said, thanks. I appreciate it. It means, it means a lot. And uh, I said that as a once in a century happening event and you're on the front line. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I mean, like when you think about when you think about like a statue, like, you know, the guys at Iwo Jima, you know, the, the putting up the flag, those guys, um, the the Vietnam, that's the fucking dog. Nothing we can do about that, guys. The dog just has a cone on because she got spayed and she just knocked over the uh, the image. You know, the Vietnam Memorial. I mean, I know these guys died, but I mean, like, this is a major moment in history. And she, she's the soldier. That It's almost like, uh, it, it, you know, when you watch MASH or whatever, you know, the... If, if Irish people don't know MASH, you know the comedy series about the uh, MASH hospital and uh, during the Korean War. Um, you know, th they they look like soldiers. It looks like a war zone. But in this case, it's just the people that you see every day, the people you see on the train, the people you see on the subway, the people you see on the Lewis that are clearly on their way to like St. James's Hospital. Just nurses, just normal people. The doctor that you have a pint with. And they're like genuinely risking their lives. I mean, this is like a real thing. I mean, two and a half times the amount of people that died in 9-11 have died from this. Uh, this is a major historical event. And when we look back in history, it's going to be people like the nurses, like my friend here, that are the heroes, you know? And I, I, like it can't be said enough that that's what they are. And we're quarantining, we're doing our bit, we're trying to stop the spread, but it's only to not put them under as much pressure, and obviously it's to save lives. But I guess some of you probably feel like, oh, I'd rather be able to be there, I feel so powerless just sitting at home, but I haven't cried every night for three weeks. You know, I don't know what they're seeing. I don't know what it feels like. It's one thing to feel powerless in your house, it's another thing to feel powerless to just, like, not be able to save a life. I mean, another friend of mine told me her mother's a nurse in the UK and that it's an automatic DNR for if you're over 75, automatic do not resuscitate. But I don't want to get into that because I don't know if that's a fact or not. But um, anyway, so I was joking with her saying she has superpowers now. Um, oh, no, yeah. So then, sorry, I, 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 I swiped down. Oh, yeah, you know, geez, I swiped down too much. So then... Um, So, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm not as organized. It's just that the, the, the text on Instagram is so annoying. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. So, so, I hope we're all better people after this. She said, uh, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, she said, a lot of people in my family don't even understand the severity of it. I joked and said, blame Fox. And... Uh, she just laughed. And then I said, they think hydrochloroquine is going to save the world. Uh, then she said, Trump today must have said 40 times, we need to open back up. I had to turn the TV off. And, like, that's the thing about Trump. Like, all this rosy picture shit is so insulting to these nurses and these doctors, you know? It's, it's, it's such an insult to what they have to put up with every day. You know, because his only concern is how this makes him look. And obviously he's worried more about the economy than the people, you know, but that's just not the issue right now. The economy will recover. It just won't recover in time to save Trump's ass. That's his real fucking concern, you know. So I said he's a curse. I hope all the medical staff around the country come out so strong against him when this is over. And then I mentioned the fact that at his press conference yesterday, he was back talking about fucking Easter and he was back talking about the cure is worse than the disease. So she said, he never talks about the people who died, who don't have funerals, who don't have family, whose nurses and doctors haven't seen their, who don't have family. Then she said, she, he doesn't, have, you know, he's not a nurse or a doctor who hasn't seen their family. Nothing of the sort, just the economy and how amazing he's doing.
what the fuck? Those are her words. You know? That's what it means to them. And I was so grateful for her to share that with me because I, you know, I didn't, I just wanted to see was she okay because I actually didn't know that she had the corona. But I was, I was, I, I was glad, not glad, but I was curious to see if the frustration that I feel watching Trump was resonating with the people who are sacrificing the most. Because obviously, you can't trust your own instincts because I'm biased, right? I've never liked Trump. But I wanted to see how it affects the people that are like, how do those words resonate with somebody who's standing next to somebody on a goddamn ventilator? That's what I wanted to see. You know? So I said, it's infuriating for me. So I can't imagine how you feel. It bothers me that there isn't more outrage. Those are my words. And then I jokingly said, he cares more about the my pillow guy. Uh, which was just fucking ridiculous because, you know, he just keeps pumping out these companies, but we're not seeing the results from this fucking public-private partnership. That's what bothers me so much. He never stops talking about all the great shit they're doing with these public-private partnerships, but these hospitals aren't seeing the masks. These hospitals aren't seeing the ventilators. We're not seeing the fucking... We're not seeing the fruits of what he's been saying. And now we're getting into sort of three weeks or even maybe even four weeks since he started acting like he was taking it seriously, despite his two blips of the cure is worse than the disease. We've seen a month and we just haven't seen any great fucking improvement. And even the, the big stuff that he's done, it's not coordinated properly. So they're not even using that boat hospital properly yet. Like nothing's coordinated. There's no national strategy. So she said, um... She, uh, because I think I proper expect him to be stupid and say the wrong thing. It's, and it's sad how our standards are so low, you know? So, and then she was like, he was talking about sports today. I could have thrown my TV out the window, which is ridiculous that he's concerned about fucking football season right now. Who gives a fuck if the Patriots are fucking, you know, going to be ready to go on opening day? Who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter, man. All these things will happen or they won't. They're not what's important right now. All that matters is what is your fucking plan? Stop throwing the blame around. You're fucking blaming governors. Like, does he even understand what the word federal means? Like the federal stockpile? You know, and then he gets in a big row with, with uh, Wei Jiang Xiong, uh, you know, because she asks, what did Jarish Kushner mean when he said our stock? Those are ours. Like, who are ours? We are our motherfucker. We are R. This is R. The United States of America. Those states are part of the R. What part of fucking grammar don't you understand? Who the fuck does federal stand for? What, is it just for fucking Washington, D.C.? Was it just for your family? Who the fuck is R? What does that even mean? It doesn't even make any sense. And then Trump fucking rams down her throat. That's a nasty question. It's not a nasty question. It's like, who are the fucking ventilators for? Who are R other than us, motherfucker? It's goddamn plural, bitch. Make me fucking... It's insane. And why the fuck is your son-in-law there anyway? Like, what the... F How the fuck is Jared Kushner in charge of organizing the response to a once-in-a-century pandemic? He's used to fucking negotiating rents with fucking commercial tenants and, and buying and selling property and getting fucking sweet deals off fucking corrupt government officials. Like, what the fuck is he doing... So, uh, uh, you know, the president made a call and it happened like, oh, oh, wow. You think you can organize a pandemic like the fucking Healy Rays organized fucking road fixing and Ken Mayer? Do me a favor, man. It's not what it is. That's not what's going down. That's not how it works. Um, I was joking with it and saying that now that she has the antibody, she's got the superpower. So she's going to have to do everything. But actually, she said that they don't force her to do anything more than uh you know anything more than her normal stuff um but she said she doesn't mind doing cpr because she doesn't want her co-workers to get sick so that's how she uh that's how she uses her superpower to help her co-workers she does cpr because she's got the antibodies um but she did think that soon it's going to get more and more real for people like if it's not real enough with those numbers she said it was going to get more and more real to people real for people because uh everyone will know someone close who's died so um then it was just a lot of like do you know anybody else that's sick um stuff that doesn't stuff that doesn't matter you know personal stuff about people we know um 
So then here's the crazy thing. Let me just check this. So here's the crazy thing, right? On top of all this horrible shit she's dealing with at work, um, her boyfriend got it, probably from her, which is not her fault. But uh, not from them, but his grandmother died of COVID. So her bo his boyfriend's grandmother already died of it. Um, like, what a what a horrific amount of shit that she's had to deal with you know it's just like not right now she's trying to donate her blood but she can't get any response which is more anno you know it's just more annoying you know because obviously she wants to get her blood out there for these um you know the the plasma therapy that they do um and uh actually by the way just for the record the reason why she had gotten tested in the first place was because she was concerned about the kids in the icu so that's how she was able to get a test um, and, uh, uh, then, yeah, that was it really. And I just was, I was grateful to her. I mean, I told her at the end I was proud of her. I, it just makes me kind of emotional, really just chatting to her. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't even think I need to add to that in terms of, of the Trump stuff. He's still going on about fake news. He's still, you know, using the the sneaky cover of a global pandemic to to fire, you know, the the guy who passed on the the whistleblower's report. And then when asked a question about it, he attacks again that it was fake news and oh god, it's it's like so relentless. And uh it's so the wrong time. For, for this type of behavior. And then on top of everything else, he makes a joke about models. But he did it in the middle of talking about the amount of death. There's going to be amount of death according to the models, you know. I've, 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 I haven't had a lot of experience with models. Well, not these types of models. You know, like whatever the joke was. But it's just like, dude, and listen, I'm a comedian. Like, in a dark, dark way, I think that is fucking hilarious. But in the wrong way. Like, I just think, like, how sick can this guy be to make that joke at that time? And, yeah, sure, I'm sure a lot of the Trump people think it's fucking hilarious. I mean, I'm sure the Trump people love all this shit. I'm sure they love him telling Wei Jiangsheng that she should be ashamed of herself for asking, like, the most basic fucking question. What did your son-in-law mean when he said, our stockpile? You know? Like, and all these journalists are just trying to fucking figure out what the fuck he's trying to do. Because all he does is talk about how great he's doing. He doesn't actually talk about the results. You know, because people still can't get tested. You know, that's the truth. Like people can't get tested. You know, but anyway, just back to the model joke before I move on. You just don't make that fucking joke, you know. Because I know that my tolerance for ridiculously inappropriate humor is not the na is not the national tolerance. The national tolerance for that type of humor is fucking low. Unless you're like a deluded, you know. And it's funny how you know I, I since I started complaining about Trump, I get a few people telling me I have TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. But the, the most hilarious thing about that is that I've only started complaining about Trump when he's like clearly doing a terrible job leading the country through a national pandemic. You know, and like the evidence is, is plain to see that he's doing a shit job. And you're telling me I have Trump derangement syndrome so you can't fucking bring yourself to stop your undying fucking cult of personality love for Trump to stop for five seconds and be like, this is fucked up. America is having one of the worst consequences of the coronavirus due to bad leadership due to late action the, there's no argument there there's no fucking argument it doesn't matter that you stopped flights from china it was way too fucking late it was actually irrelevant you know you you, you maybe saved five percent you're still going on about it like it was the big action it wasn't the big action you, you, like there, there's going to be no debate in history the debate in history is that trump acted too late and not only did he act too late but even after he acted he kept fucking going against the advice he kept fucking undermining the the actions of public health officials that, that that that's clear as day i don't even care you can fucking keep keep commenting keep complaining it's clear as day he's doing a shit job it's actually not even up for debate the only reason it's up for debate is because he's got a propaganda arm in fox news you know cnn msnbc they are biased against trump but they are not fucking propaganda for the democratic party they don't like trump that is a fact that is a fact. But Fox is a, is, a, is, is state propaganda in a way that's almost Putin-esque. 
It's Xi Jinping-esque. You know? If you watch Fox News, everything is fine. Honestly, everything is fine. They go on about the economy, and they talk about things being rosier, and they talk about the cure being worse than disease. And then when they show clips of Trump talking about masks, they don't show him saying, but I'm not going to wear one which is just another example of fucking bad leadership. It's just nonstop, fuck the experts. It's been fuck the experts since the get-go, man. And look where it's gotten us. Look where it's gotten us. It, enough, like, enough already, you know? And I, so I, 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 I don't have Trump derangement syndrome. You're fucking deluded. If you can't bring yourself to criticize Trump one bit, Mike Francesa, most of my Irish listeners will not know who Mike Francesa is, but he's this, like... Radio, uh, sports radio host who as it turns out I love but part of my love for him is he drives me insane because he's an ignoramus but he's a very entertaining ignoramus and he loves Trump you know he's like a 50 something year old white guy from Long Island and he loves Trump and it's not a surprise I know a hundred Mike Francesas and they're all friends of mine because actually I don't care that people like Trump you know, I'm not one of these people that I, I don't fall out with my friends that love Trump. I have plenty of friends. that I'm a white guy from Queens. I've got a lot of friends that like Trump. You know, we don't fall out. We don't even debate that hard because we just, you know, I, I know at heart that why they want to like Trump is because they think he can do something good. But most of the, the white guys in Queens, they've gone off Trump, including Francesa, who basically was just like, you don't bring up the my pillow guy. You, you, you can't bring up the my pillow guy. People are dying. People are dying. How are you bringing up the my pillow guy? I don't understand. I you you just can't do this. It's just, you can't you can't do this. I don't understand what's going on. And I didn't even see about making jokes about models because it was the day before that that he was getting upset. But you know, I mean, even fucking Frances has had enough. So if you're the person that's telling me I got fucking Trump derangement syndrome. And you can't stop for one second and admit that this guy is doing a terrible fucking job because everybody was late to the party. It's okay to admit that you relate to the party and do everything in your power to rectify the situation. It's okay. But instead, you're so fucking narcissistic that you can't stop worrying about how it looks for you, how people criticize you, so you spend all your time trying to cover up your mistakes instead of just fucking not making any new ones. Stop worrying about the fucking perception of your past mistakes. Stop. You fucked up. No problem. Now let's lead into the future. It's about human lives. It's about saving the country, man. You keep you keep having moments of realization where you take it seriously for 48 hours and then you can't handle the fucking heat. You can't handle the heat when the criticism rises. So then you, you fucking try to make it seem like you didn't make those mistakes in the first place and then you stop leading towards the future. That's why we're fucked because it's like a stagnation coming from the federal government. There is no plan. There is no plan. You keep blaming everybody else instead of just admitting your mistakes, learning from them and fucking being a better leader. You are going to go down as the worst leader in American history once you're fucking gone and the Fox News propaganda arm has moved on and people forget about fucking Trump. Real analysis of what you did is going to be horrific, bro. So fucking, you have a chance. You're not listening to me anyway. Why am I talking to you like I'm talking to you directly? But it's terrible leadership. It's so bad. The selfishness is unbelievable. And it's, it's really represented in the fact that the CDC comes out with guidelines that say wear masks and the masks are all about not spreading it if you have it because lots of people are asymptomatic and that's clear as day half of New York City probably has it. wear a fucking mask you know countries that wear masks actually have done better you know they're getting more and more data on that mask countries do better and even if it turns out to not be true let's fucking try it out you know, you have no problem whipping out this fucking fantasy that hydrochloroquine and Zithromax is a fucking wonder drug, but for some reason you won't, you won't fucking try a thing that you can just fucking do. You can just do it. Just put on a fucking mask. Oh, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm meeting kings and queens and leaders. I, 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 kings and queens and leaders. You can't, you can't wear it. You can't, you can't have a mask on when you're doing that. It's like no one's telling you to wear a fucking mask in the Oval Office, you fucking dickhead. They're telling you wear a mask when you go outside and you, you, you don't have to wear a mask when you go outside. You're just doing your fucking press conferences. But don't say you're not going to wear one. Because then every fucking stupid Trump-loving motherfucker is going to be like, I'm not wearing a fucking mask. Fuck that shit. This is not this is no worse than the flu. The fucking hydrochloroquine's working. It's a, it's a conspiracy. They're trying to keep hydrochloroquine down. Like, as if the whole fucking world is in cahoots to try to get rid of Trump by not letting out the wonder drug of hydrochloroquine. They're fucking testing it, man. They're fucking testing it. You keep pushing it. We still don't know. Wait till we know. Wait till we know. 
And by all accounts, from what I can see, is it's not going to be a wonder drug. It's going to help some people some of the time. You know? You're not a fucking scientist. I'm not a fucking scientist. I'm not just going to go out there and be like, I got a feeling this hydrochloric's going to work. I just got a feeling. You know? That's like these fucking, like some taxi drivers, like, I'll tell you right now, buy this fucking stock. I got a feeling. It's like, you don't know. You might be right, but it'd be luck. It'd be fucking pure luck. Oh, God. I don't even know why I get into this shit. So I'm going to leave it there today. Thanks for listening, guys. We got uh, we got a good week coming up. We'll have another episode with Steve. We'll have another episode with Joanne. Joanne's getting frustrated. She's trying to do her own podcast, which I hope she does. But um, it's hard right now because you can't get any support because nobody's around. And um, what I might pitch to her, I might pitch if she's she wants to do her own interviews, right, which I, I think is great. What I might pitch is that we'll give her like Joanne Fridays on, on this pod. Like get the name changed. And then she can just do like Zoom interviews. I know the audio isn't great on those Zoom interviews, but they're not bad. It's not bad, you know. Um, depending on who you're interviewing, depending on what mic they have. So I might pitch that to her in the interim. And then whenever she wants, she can just take it off and we'll tell everybody to push over there. Because I'm not, you know, I, I don't mind. I'm happy. I'm happy for everybody to do their thing, you know. Um, so I hope you guys don't mind. I'm not, I'm not going to edit out the, uh, you know, that me looking for texts and stuff just makes my life easier to just bang these up, you know, quick. And that's what these are. These are really bonus apps. I'm sure there was other things I wanted to talk about in relation to Trump, but of course I stupidly, the camera, the phone I used is the one that I put my notes on. Let me see if the notes came through on this one. Sometimes they come through. Um, no, that was the, that was the notes from the last one. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Hey, Becky, Becky, come here. Let's say goodbye. Let's say goodbye to listeners. Up, up. She's got a cone on cause she got spayed. Up, up, up. Come on. Let's say goodbye. Up. Good girl. This is Becky. Say goodbye, Becky. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening, guys. That's Becky's face. Look at me. Ugh. And um, we'll see you next week. Five stars on iTunes. I don't normally let her up, by the way. Five stars on iTunes. Actually, I'll just pull this off just for one second. Just for one for the crack. Hold on. Come on, Becky. Up. So... Uh, Five stars on iTunes. Um, five stars on iTunes. Give us a review. Um, subscribe. Oh, yeah, Shift on Monday. we got a Shift episode coming out tomorrow. And um, by the way, Becky needs a full-time home. She's a very good dog. She is. She's actually the best dog I've ever had. They're very lovable, the old pit bulls. So Becky, Becky needs a full-time home. Smile for the camera. Becky needs a full-time home, so if you know anybody that lives in the New York area that would like a full, f- forever home, forever home for Becky, uh, let me know, and uh, we will uh, we'll give her a full-time home. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down a little bit so you can see more of Becky, and then we'll say goodbye. Becky, look at this camera. Look at this camera. Look at this. You fucking idiot. Why don't you fucking listen to me? And that's the whole thing. People would be like, Jesus, you can't let a pit bull that close to your face. But sure, we're we have a good, we have a good relationship already. So I wish, yeah, Becky, look at the camera. There, there she is. She needs a forever home. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, she just comes in there. It's terrible, isn't it? It's going to be hard to give her away. I'll tell you that for sure. I'll tell you that for nothing. It's going to be hard to give her away. Let me see, can I get one of those? Before we go, let me see, can I get one of these, um, the pit bull purrs. Come on, purr, say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Guess not. Peace.